Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the lower finals of the March 2018 TV2 tournament for Zero K. It is going to be Anir Insaniac versus Mackie and Orphelius. They're going to be going at it on Shimmer Shore, and after this, the winner of that goes up against Gota and Kingstad in a best of three to take the tournament. So, with that, they are going to be... I mean, it's going to be probably a fairly short match. Shimmer Shore, very aquatic map. And we've seen before, water maps go fast. They go very fast. Which is good, because it's been like three and a half hours. <laughs> but, yeah, water maps don't take very long to finish. But, apparently, Mackie is having some problems with Discord. Doesn't surprise me. Sometimes there are issues with the voice chat on Discord. Which is ironic, because I'm going to be using, probably even getting co-commentary later on. So... Yeah, at this point, we're going to be using Discord anyway. Let's get Google Frog on. Wish off Google Frog as the co-caster. Hey, Google Frog, how's it going? Hello, okay. It was pretty early for the last three hours, early in the morning. Yeah, that's fair. I know what you mean. <laughs> I thought the 1v1 tournament was okay, but 2v2, you suddenly got to talk to people at oh, 6am. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, I was just thinking, right. actually, I was kind of surprised how fast the matches were going. Like, quite honestly, it's just been a lot, like, it's been nice that it's been this fast. I was hoping it'd be this fast, but it's still been surprisingly fast. Now we have Shimmer Shore, which is another map that usually goes one way or the other in five minutes. Well, let's see if they know what to do, which is basically to build a ship factory and something else. Are you sure? Because everyone's building double ship factories these days. As we see here, and you're in Zaniac going double ship factory. So I think that that's that seems to be the way to go on C these days. I mean, we do see occasionally, you know, the amphibs and occasionally hovercraft. But it feels like double ship factory is the way people play if they want to win right away. And throwing an amphib or hover is the way you want to if you want to win by dragging the game out as long as possible. Oh, well, I don't know about double ship because you can, if you need to, assist the ship factory. Yeah, which is the odd thing. Right, I'd if you start close enough together. And yet we see double ship all the time, which is a, a strange, strange thing. And I noticed in the last two of your tournament as well, that double ship was a common thing on sea maps. We are seeing Orf go for Amphib, though. Not sure what Mac is going to do. Oh, ship. Okay, so ship and Amphib versus double yeah. ship. I think Amphib hover is good. Like in a 2v2, you get a bit of extra utility. You get to fight around the islands and the coast. Yeah, and that's something that I'm... As long as... Yeah, well, sometimes Orf has to assist the factory to get a few things out. But apart right. from that... I mean, the main thing I'm thinking is that Amphbot has a lot of underwater stuff they can work with, and it can be difficult for sea to deal with that, for ships to deal with underwater. And they get a bunch of ducks or a bunch of scallops and then just completely wreck ships. And the ships still have the hunters, yeah, and... but that's about it. And boy is really good. Yes, that's true. Slowing everyone down. And that is another really strong thing to have there. So, unfortunately, it seems like Mackie's having some terrible time actually using Discord chat, which is a little surprising, a little disappointing, because Discord is usually quite good. I mean, we're using it right now. Hope it doesn't fail for us. Yeah. So, hmm, just thinking here, like, what are, you, what are you thinking they will go for in terms of Amphib production in particular? It's hard to say, because... People don't play open ship games enough to know what's going on. Hmm. When I was testing ships, the interesting thing about them was that they had about four raiders. They had the sort of light. You know, they cost a hundred, but they're sort of the dart weight of the sea. Yeah, the hunter. The hunters and the cutters. But Sea Wolf and Corsair are sort of heavy enough as well. Sorry, it's fast enough to be like Scorch level. Yeah, and that's 
mean, we often see a lot of course we were seeing a lot of Corsairs, Cutters. Not so much I find Hunters and Seawolves. I find in general that doesn't tend to come up. So I'm depends on the match. That's fair, but if, I've noticed that it comes up later on, like as the match goes on, people realize, oh hey, underwater is a hard thing to deal with. Let's do underwater stuff, and then they start throwing in Seawolves, and then start throwing in Hunters, and then the Hunters get torn apart yeah. by the Corsairs. So, it's a way of going. Hmm. Man, I really hope Mackie managed well, to get back get, in. You can get, say, an early Seawolf and protect from Hunters with Cutters. And yeah, that's true, but you don't really see a lot of that. Mess up the Corsairs. Well, we saw a little bit of that in an earlier match that was on the that other new sea map. I can't remember the name of it anymore. Which one was it, anyway? That was... Oh, Columbia Basin. It was one of the Columbia Mason matches I watched. That's exactly what happened. I think it was one that Gordo yeah, was in. Base, much, that was much thinner, so you'd think there'd be less subs. Yeah. Because subs are quite bad against urchins. Well, and we Corsair did... is quite good against okay, urchins. Okay, so that explains it. So it's just because it was because of the size of the map. So you're expecting you're going to see a fair bit more Seawolves on a map this size. Yeah. It was about the same size map, but it was a lot craggier. Yeah, it just didn't take advantage of most of the map. I mean, really, it might have might as well have been a map of, like, like if it was 12 by 12, it might as well have been a 10 by 10 for how much the outside was just decoration. It was pretty, but it was still largely decorative. At any rate, it looks like Mumble Clan is going for a fairly aggressive opener, just very quickly trying to get in there, getting rid of whatever Mariners they can find. And I feel like while this worked fairly well on the Columbia Basin, I don't think it'll work here just because the size of the map means they can't get in before counterforces are built. Uh, Mackie's rushing a siren. That's their plan. I see now. Yeah, that makes sense. See, if you play if you play thinner maps or you know, big team games where this is just a small part, then they really, really like the siren because it's you know it's a heavy thing that can influence the land and has some AOE. And it's just, you know, heavy ship. But it's not so great to start when it's early open. Right, that makes sense. I think a bigger problem there, too, is that it's also very expensive. We saw their game they just played with you guys, that they had the early Grizzly and used that for pressure, but that early Siren is not finding the same value. as It's not managing to get the pressure on. And here in Saniac, are just having... Just being able to do whatever the heck they want. They're having a field day on here. Like, so the Siren has to now play catch-up rather than being able to push pressure. Yeah. They do have the Ducks, and there's no anti-sub. Oh, there's two Hunters. But the Ducks are just a bit slow to deal with it. Mm. So the Siren can probably beat those Cutters. If Depends. it can hit them. If they spread, they might be able to disarm it. Which they might do. I mean, the way that Saniac has been commanding them right now, I don't know if they actually will, but if they do... Would be a good thing to have. However, at this point, it's just, it looks to me like a real question of whether or not the Hunters go down quickly enough. And no, they don't. They, they've they got those ducks. Actually, they possibly have Orpheus' commander. At least disarm. Not a whole lot of follow-up forces, so they're not going to be completely dead. But at the same time, we're seeing the Siren. This is what's happening to it. Not really managing to get a whole lot of success. Instead, getting completely destroyed early on. All that metal. All that metal for nothing. 600 metal. Put into a unit that is now just a wreck at the bottom of the ocean. At least they can reclaim it for 240. That's fair. But yeah, Corsairs are just shotgun anti-heavy. They'll destroy the bigger ships without support. And I mean, that support was all over on the north side of the map trying to save... or Trying to save Ophelius' commander. So overall, this seems like it's a very, very strong start coming in here for Enir and Saniac. Every single fight they've had has been in their favor. The only thing they don't have right now is economy. Oh, they've another siren out. Yeah, if they I... put the ducks underneath the siren, they'll do fairly well, because the ducks can kill the corsairs. But if they don't coordinate them, the corsairs will just pick them off. Well, it looks see like... now the sirens a bit more scared than the previous one was. Well, for good reason. I mean, the previous one it died ignominiously to basically nothing, like stuff that was half its cost. So I can see this. I can see the caution there. But at the same time, Northeast, they've lost the economic advantage I was pointing out that they had. And Mumble Clan is really just building up. They got yeah. the South built up. And now, 
I mean, that siren is kind of built around the fact that they had the economy, but now they don't. Now it's just becoming... The siren hasn't been shot yet. It's just getting outmaneuvered. Exactly. I mean, that siren... Both sirens have essentially been useless. That's 1,200 metal that has gone to no value at all. Right. What they really need is just a bunch of cutters and a few hunters to kill off the naked expansion on the bottom. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Like, Sanic has no no defenses. The thing, though, is I think what their defenses are is the pressure. They put so much yes, pressure onto exactly. Orphelius that they're not even going to consider going in the back, or onto Mackie in particular, because they have the ships. They're not even going to consider going around the back, because what are they going to do? They're going to go around the back, and now they're going to get overwhelmed. You can't do that. So, no, I think... But still, you know, 300 metal in Raiders would just kill off all those mexes and bring the economy back to parity. Yeah, I mean, if they knew that, but that's the question of how do you scout that out? That's always the real trouble. Yeah, well, they should, they should just be scouting. And again, I, I agree, it's just a question of, like, when you're doing this in a situation where you're losing a bunch of your army and trying to get it, it's like, I understand the pressure. I do, I do agree that one cut around the back isn't that much of an investment to figure out if there is an opening. But... Clearly, just the psychological pressure is so much that it's almost impossible to convince themselves of that. Also, is that submarine going through? Yeah, they're going through the dirt. Huh. What dirt? Look at the sea wolf. Oh, someone made it. Oh, I see, they're yeah. just trundling above the um, shallow floor. Yeah, the point that I think they're intersecting the shallow floor. So but the siren is doing okay against those subs and those light ships. But it really needs defense against the Corsairs, which it does get with these ducks. Oh, and the scallop, too. Yeah. Okay, so those So are... if they can just... If they can coalesce their forces together and push with it, it could be okay. Right, and actually at this point, now that Mackie doesn't have the defender, this could be a turnaround point, as Northeast Side does have a massive army value advantage. They've got 2,000 metal more units on the field, and the Siren has been doing its job, so that's not wasted metal anymore. Oh, you're looking at the new the new graphs. Oh yeah, I have the those up all the time. Value. I would like that that the position that they're in when you adjust them outside of the end game was saved, but otherwise I use them all the time. What the? What are they doing now? More? I don't know. Mic issue. I mean, I would imagine no, but it's I have no idea what they're thinking. Oh. Maybe they should just use mumble. I mean, I like Discord, but it feels like Mumble would be more reliable in their particular case. Oh, yeah, the Mumble clan knows what they're doing. <laughs> like, Discord's a good program. It's just that it's it's not working for them right now. Well, at any rate, the way this match is going, it does look like Northeast does have an opportunity to get in. Right now, they have the army value advantage. Their metal... Metal use is about the same. Metal excess is more Mumble Clan's problem than Northeast's problem. But Northeast right now does not have the production to make that excess go away. The only thing, though, is there are so many vulnerable troops. So many things these ducks can destroy. That well, does... South is a siren now, which is very good against the ducks. Oh, right. Yeah, they got that built up. So, that's a fair oh, point. two sirens, in fact. One for each player. Yeah, that's the thing. They will be able to protect the Mariners well enough. The thing, though, is that does still open things up for the Hunters or the Corsairs to go around the back and find that Maki... Or, sorry, find that Saniac has not expanded safely. They have all these open expansions, and that would be a... Like you said, that'd be a great thing to find. And if they did, that could secure them the game. North does have a lot of reclaim, though, because they're all the fighting the area. About one and a half thousand. Oh, North that's side true. of the map. It's a bit of a contested region, but yeah, most of it is in a contested region in the center. But still, they got a couple hundred of it that's relatively easy to get to, and overall, uh, yeah, 1,500. So... Ah, uh, no one's noticed there's 500 metal of rocks on each corner. Mm -hmm. Oh. So there is. Huh. Stop pausing! Okay. See, look yeah. at that siren in the middle just killing those ducks. Yeah, sonic guns. Those hit underwater. Those do a lot of damage underwater. And now we're seeing Mackie go away from the vulnerable expansions. Though we are seeing Mackie go into the vulnerable expansions, I think they might be watching the stream. We do have a delay on, but it is only two minutes, and after that giant pause, everything would have caught oh, up. I shouldn't be watching the stream. 
I mean, they, I don't know if they shouldn't be watching the stream, but there is a there is a delay to prevent that from being a thing. But with massive pauses like that, it does mean that if someone were watching the stream, yeah, it's still a thing. Two minutes is still a thing. Yeah. Well, at any rate, we have. Oops. I, turn it. I think they just figured out they need to raid. Yeah, probably. So here's the sea wolves on the left. Very good defense against the surface ships. Scratch my monitor, damn it. Ah, see, here's where the amphibious units shine. See? On the um, top left island. Oh, yeah. You get a bit of bit more strength on land, and you can just push that commander off. Although, they may fall to this urchin. They're not the best. No, but... They get to those. At the same time, though, the raiding was massively successful. The cutters are finding loads of value against the wind gen or the tile generators, and while the siren is back to deal with them, still, the value was found. The metal extractors were destroyed. Northeast... On top of the reclaim, they also do just happen to have stronger static economy and stronger reclaim. Yeah. All they need is all they need is the caretakers. Get those built up. Mackie, do not make. Oh, this is so free. It's not Mackie. They're not going to make the same mistake as last time. They had their caretakers up this time. We're good. I don't know. Actually, you didn't see the last game. There's one game where it was. It was the game on Altier Crossing. No, you did. You were playing against them that time. That was the one that they won. Yeah, Mackie didn't have oh, a caretaker yeah. up. Yeah, for a little while, Mackie built a caretaker and then halfway through went to do something else, like build a storage because the commander died, and then went to build another caretaker instead of finishing the last caretaker, which was 90% done, and then finished them both. And that's when they managed to turn it around. Oh. Look at this. They've got three sirens in the middle now, Mumble Clan, Ooh. with a bit of support. That's quite a bit. Yeah, that's easily enough that it's going to be... It's going to be entirely up to these amphibs to peel away. I mean, and it's pretty clear that Mumble Clan is confident they can just rush forward and deal more damage quickly than Northeast can. I'm not sure I agree with that confidence, but at the same time, they are managing to get in quite a bit. And there's nothing really in the well, back lines of defense. Northeast is really going for ducks. They're trying yeah. to raid while Mumble Clan is just pushing in. And those ducks are going to do nothing against the Sirens as we've already seen. So, you know, valiant effort, but at this point... Mumble Clan really has no opposition in the main base at all. They can get rid of this shipyard right now. In fact, I'm not sure if there's anything that's going to keep Mackie and Phyllis in this game. If they lose that shipyard, they haven't got much left. What, what was that noise? Piano. Okay. That Was that you? No. Oh, okay. Anyway. At this point, the sirens have basically taken it. Like, this is... This is pretty much over. Orphelius and Mackie... Now, Mackie's lost basically everything. Orphelius has a fair amount of stuff around the map, but... Even with the economic position... If they position, disband boys, I reckon they beat the sirens. But... They don't think boys are unit, I don't think. Although... The problem with scallops is they just can't catch sirens. Right. But the sirens at the same time are in a bit of a bad spot to run away, so Although this might actually work shallow, them So they got to use their shotguns. Yep, well, they got to show off and then die. Almost worked. I don't think a lot of people think boys are units these days, though. Archers have really taken over that role, and archers are useless in the water maps. So it seems like a lot of people are going for scallops instead of boys, because boys don't work as well on land. Or at least don't work in the early games, so then people go for archers, and archers work super well. And then forget boys exist. Yeah. But boys are great. They heal very fast, see. And they slow stuff down, which is very useful. Yeah, it's just that, you know, Amphib has a lot of units, it's an unusual factory, and trying to keep in mind every single thing every single one of the units does. And that can be really difficult to do. At this point, though, it may not matter simply for the sheer number of units that Saniac has and that the Southwest team, or North, sorry, the Mumble Clan team in general has. Well, the North team really need the diversity of ships. They have to get a shipyard up. I don't see anything happening for that end. <clears throat> I mean, we have conscious I guess around on the, the shallows, on the shallows, the Scallop is doing pretty well against out of position sirens. Right. Because they get to fire their shotgun and their um, depth charges. And so handy. Powerful, you know. hmm. But, I mean, what do you do about the Corsairs, though, and the Seawolves? I mean, those are still going to be a problem. 
Ah, uh, scallops deal with those easily. Hmm. Oh no, they're going for a gunship factory on the left, which could do something. Urchins shooting only surface or underwater targets. I mean, maybe, but at the same time, not too hard to bring up a few shredders. I think. They have to get some defenses in their base if they just don't want to lose a Torby's Sire. Oh, so. oh, I don't see that happening. That's a delaying tactic. <sighs> Yeah, and considering that the scallops are not finding as much value as they are because they're no longer in the shallows, it's not being a thing. And at the same time, a near in the back of the sea wolves just getting loads of value. I mean, the northwest is the only place where the northeast team is actually having much success. And even that's just because they haven't been attacked there yet. They've also got an envoy attacking the island, so they're going to deal with that. That's the, the ship's answer to islands, is to just outrange everything on the island. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a nice thing you would have. I thought it had depth charts, but I guess that was changed recently. No, that was changed a while ago, with the... Maybe a year ago, even. Oh, well, yeah, that's how often we get to see sea games. <laughs> I mean, these the tournaments we've seen a siren, lot of them. Basically. Yeah, that's true, too. The Siren pretty much took over all the roles. And at this point, it's going to be able to get rid of most of these factories, too, although maybe not completely. Still, though, Northeast is so far behind. It's clear that Mackie and Ophelius don't want to lose if, and don't want to give up if they had the chance. But it's also clear that it's it's over. Like, they've got nothing left. The envoys are taking care of the island. The sirens and seawolves are taking care of everything on, the man, on land. And there's nothing else left. The economy is so much weaker, too. And there, okay, there it is. There's that final push. Cutters and hunters should be making the message very clear. Eh, the scallops are some of a riot unit. But they're just getting starved out at the moment. Trying to get that gunship planned, which will be too late. Yeah, and it looks like Mackie's out, Orphelius will be out soon, and that'll be... That'll be game, that'll be Mackie and Orphelius getting third place. As Anir and Sania go back up the upper racket to fight against Gorda and Kingstead, possibly for first place themselves. So Mumble Clan, moving on. Anyway, that game was interesting. I mean, we did see Double Ship did work out, which is why I was saying like the Double Ship comes up all the time, and it seems to do a fine enough job. Yeah, I think the the amp factory is okay though. I agree. It just got it just became the only factory, and that was really what screwed it. If it had been the only factory, there could have been something. Oh, they forgot about Limpet. He's right. Yep. Limpet in the shallows would slow the ships significantly. I mean, Limpet's also a very new unit, and again, it's one of those things where people don't think about a lot of these units in Amphib and Shipyard, and Sea Factors in general don't get much attention. So I can't say I'm surprised. Still, though, as it is, Anir and Saniac. Man, what are they going to be fighting on? I'm curious what the next map is going to be. Because I don't remember exactly how that was going. I don't think... I don't know if it was sorted out which map is going to be the first map going in. I wonder if they're still using the old bands. Hmm? Oh, where's Kingstead? Yeah, they just went. I think they're... Are they in a match? They better not be in a match. Oh, they were observing. They were watching. They're still at the Zeki turning jet. Oh, okay. Maybe they dropped. Left the channel. Well, that's fine. All that matters is what map this is, and then after that point, how the games go. 